now. Um, so, uh, so you can watch it again if you want to uh, go back and check to see like a tip that Margot shares today. Um, or if you know anybody else that might be interested in watching this, we will have it posted out to our website um, in the next couple of days. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Margot. Good morning. We have a little play. We have a little screen out here that's on top of everything. Does that go away? Do you want me to touch a screen? Good morning, everybody. I know most of you. I think the one that traveled the farthest today is my sister from North Carolina. Let's see what that says. And we're going to try to uh, fix the screen here for a sec. Let's see. There you go. So Cindy, can you wave and let people know you're my sister from North Carolina that I miss so much? And that, can I tell them that you're moving here? And my sister's moving here. So we get to have her back in Minnesota very soon. She and her husband will be coming back. So I'm excited about that. I see Julie and I'm trying to say hi, Julie. And I'm trying to see who else we have. It's hard to see. Janet Chestnut. Oh, Janet. Hi, Janet. Hi. Hi. Oh, and Janet, the Janets are here. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Chestnut, are you still working? Who? She said no. Okay, good. Very good. Sounds good. And Janet, I'm, a re I'm a retiree now. Good girl. Good girl. Now you got to figure out what you're going to do all summer in this beautiful town. So we'll, we'll probably run into each other walking. And I know a Janet Deason walks all the time. We got a bunch of walkers going by right now. Well, good morning. And this is about all you need is love and chocolate. And the song, All You Need Is Love was written by John Lennon and Paul McCartney in 1967. It was at the height of the Vietnam War. And for those of us in the room, which I think probably most of us were, uh, we're around back then and we understood what was going on in the Vietnam War because it was the first time a war was televised on television. And so we watched it and um, the lyrics, I think we all know, I think even younger generations probably know the lyrics, uh, but the, the uh, actual, um, the lyrics are actually quite abstract, but the refrain is very memorable. But they're very abstract, uh, uh, like a lot of the Beatles on the Sgt. Pepper album were very abstract. So I just challenge you to go out today and look at the lyrics for uh, All You Need Is Love. And I'm not sure exactly what their message is there, but I think it was to that the whole world needed love. And who needs more love right now than our world and our neighbors? So we're going to make some yummy stuff today. And Valentine's Day is just right around the corner. And so I thought of a couple of wonderful desserts that you could make. And the first dessert that we're gonna to make today is a strawberry, chocolate covered strawberry cheesecake. And I have never done, on the five years that I've done these classes, I've never, I was talking to Stacy. I don't think I've ever done cheesecake before. So I'm gonna give away my secrets and you're gonna see exactly how easy this is to do. So don't tell anyone, okay? That's what our promise right here. So I'm gonna start by making the crust. I've got a nine inch springform pan. If you don't do a crust, you don't have to do a crust. If you don't do a crust, it is completely gluten-free. And it is, it, it, it's, it's fine to take out of the pan. It's not hard to take out of the pan at all. The, um, the, the gluten part is the grim crackers. And I use a whole package. You don't have to, but um, you could use a half a package if you want, but I just kind of rough, rough them up here a little bit on the table and uh, not a fine crumb form, but just get them to, hold on, I need my scissors. Get them to a rough form. And then we're gonna put them in the pan. And I do like to have a thicker crust with my um, berry cheesecakes because they get juicy. So I'm gonna, I have melted two to three tablespoons of butter, which because my house is so cold, it's now gotten solid. So I'm gonna put it back in the microwave. I did it too soon. I, I'm very, my sister will tell you I'm very organized. So I did it way too soon. 
And when you, I tell you that we want the cream cheese at room temperature, it's the same in our house as a refrigerator. It's popping. <laughs> the joys of yeah. We have an assistant. We do. Mary Jean Erasmusson is here who uh, said she will assist me. I'm going to actually have you wash a pan here in a little okay. bit. So we're going to put that butter. We want to get all that butter in there. And my mantra for these classes is to teach you to have a sink full of soapy water that you can put everything in and you don't have to worry about the dishes till the tail end of the day. So what I've done is sort of broken up. That's it on the crust. That's all it took right there. So now I'm gonna take, it's actually three eight ounce packages of cream cheese. <laughs> One cup of sugar. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of vanilla, homemade vanilla, in our absolute vodka and Madagascar beans. And I'm going to go over to the mixer and I'm going to be right in the front here. It might be kind of noisy. And we're going to mix this up and add some egg, two eggs. And we'll wait for this just to mix a little. Get our eggs ready. We're going to add them one at a time. I'm just gonna scrape it down once. And all the things you've heard about cheesecake and all the fussy stuff people do to, get, to make the perfect cheesecake will go out of the window right now. It's absolutely ready. We're adding one whole quart of strawberries. This might seem kind of intimidating to add this much fruit, but um, I used to do about half of this in the beginning and I just think it's so beautiful when you put all of them in because it makes a very large, very large cheesecake. And the more fruit, the merrier. And you don't, don't put this very high on the mixer because you really don't want to crush the berries. And that's it, that's how hard that is. So don't tell anybody. We'll scrape off our paddle. We're going to add this to our crust. The shop was called rustic because we did things in a rustic manner. We never strived for perfect. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So this is going to go in the oven for 55 minutes at 325 in the convection oven. If you have a conventional oven, you have it at 350. So we're gonna go over here to the oven and put it in at 325. Timer's on. It doesn't matter how many items you have in the oven. Um, how many cheesecakes you make or whatever, 55 minutes is the actual perfect, perfect thing. Do you want to wash this out for me, please? We need to have that cleaned off for our next cake. The next cake, the recipe is available. Stacy will make it available to you. Um, just email her. This is a cheese or a cassis cake made by Ina Garten. And the reason I, I took this on is because I know she likes to keep things easy. And even though this is a crust, this, this has no flour in it at all. So it is a flourless cake. So it's perfect for gluten-free. And so that is, it's actually in this book. 
So it comes from the foolproof collection. Yes. And those of you in Lake City, Stacy said you could just stop at the library and pick up a copy. Okay. The chocolate that we're going to be working with is the Ghirardelli chocolate all day. And it's all the dark chocolate. And so this is the brand that I use. There is a uh, many different types of dark chocolate out there, but this is what I use. We're going to start out <coughs> by taking 10 ounces of dark chocolate with 12 tablespoons of butter. That sounds like a lot. It is. It is. You needed any of these other ones? No. Thank you. That's, that's oh, that was your whole job for the Mary Jane. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's your whole job for the whole the whole hour. So this the cassis cake is our next. This I've been making for years for Easter and of course Valentine's Day too, but for Easter, it um, is my daughter-in-law Beth's favorite cake in life and. It's something that um, you will not have to have a big piece of. It's going to be something that a smaller piece is, might be better. So right now we're melting that chocolate and butter in the microwave for just a minute and a half. We're going to be adding a few things to that, but we're going to let it cool because we're going to make an egg mixture. What I can tell you is that cassis is a, a, cur a black currant liqueur, and it is a berry that's found in Northern Europe. Um, you might have heard of this if you were in the cocktail uh, cocktail era for a while. This was used as a in a drink called Cure Royale, and this was uh, one part of the cassis and one and four parts of champagne. And so, if you were ever in the in the some of us back in the day, I never had this before, but it's it's really, really intense. It's a really intense flavor. We use uh, a lot of it in this in this cake. So I'm just going to mix this up and we're going to kind of set this aside. This is a base for the, the cake. You will never have a more beautiful cake batter than this. This is a, the silkiest cake batter you'll ever see. Now what we're going to do, since Mary Jane was so lovely and cleaned out my bowl, we're going to add six eggs. The, the recipe asks for five extra large eggs, and I don't have extra large eggs, so I put in six large eggs. I'm going to put in a cup of sugar. Look at that. I'm also going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. This is going to mix for three to five minutes, and this will be a little bit annoying because it, you're going to hopefully it won't be too loud, but it won't take very long at all. I don't even think it takes three minutes. So we're going to triple it the size, and we're going to have it, it'll come out with a kind of a buttery texture. So I'm going to turn this up, and we're going to let it go. So it's going to be a little noisy for a few minutes.
want you to cut out a circle for the bottom of the spring form pan. We're going to use a nine inch spring form pan, just like we did with the cheesecake. And I'm going to spray it. I'm going to add the paper, the parchment paper, and I'm going to spray it again. So we sprayed the paper as well. Stacy mentioned that you didn't hear a darn thing I said, so I'll be repeating that for you. This is what we want. We want it to be in a ribbon form. Can you see how it kind of ribbons at this point? The best part of this mixer is you can walk away from it. That's what I love. Okay. So we're going to take the base, it's cooled off a little bit, enough for me, and then I'm going to put a half a cup of the Hershey's cocoa. We talked about the fact that you can use different kinds of cocoa, and she is actually recommending in the, in the recipe a different kind, and Mary Jane, what kind did you ask about? Well, it's an old Dutch kind of thing, and it's a re some kind of refined, and I had never seen it before, but Okay. I just didn't know if you ever used that, because I always have Hershey's, but... Right, I had never used, has anybody else used it? Oh, okay, Stacy has it. And okay, Stacy. Okay, Stacy uses a Dutch cocoa from Penzi's and she said it's super rich and you might not want to use a whole amount if you go. And I'm a huge Penzi's fan, so I'm on my way to try that next time. I'm almost out of this, so that'll be great. Some people just don't like that yeah, she said some people just don't like that strong of a flavor. This is an intense cake. So this is, you can see right now that we're adding a lot of extra layers of flavor here. So we're gonna whisk in that cocoa and that takes just a couple seconds. Then I'm gonna add says a teaspoon of vanilla, but you know, I always add two. And then we're gonna add six tablespoons of cassis. Now this is straight up liquor. So this is a intense flavor. And um, this is a two tablespoon spoon. So I'm gonna just add three of those. Is that expensive liquor? No, I suppose any brand. I'm sure my husband got this somewhere local, so yeah, <laughs> not, not expensive. But I, I'm sure there's other brands that are, I had a different brand in the beginning doing this and it was a fancier bottle. It was like, you could put it out on a little liqueur presentation. Okay, so we're gonna take this brand of pan. Um, TJ Maxx, I had uh, 20 of these pans that are my shop and I sold them with the shop. So I had to go shopping and these were at TJ Maxx. And what's crazy about these, and I can't tell you how many pans I have scrubbed out over the years, literally hand scrubbed. These babies go right in the my dishwasher and they come out perfect. And I think it was like eight bucks. And I, so I bought, I have four new ones. That is the kind of the beauty of, of selling a place and they, you sell everything with it. And then you get to go shopping to buy new stuff for your house. So, okay, we're gonna take this gorgeous chocolate and liqueur and we're gonna add this. I wish this was a glass bowl so you could see me folding this together, but I will, you'll see it when it goes in the pan. It's very rich and it's super, super yummy. So I'm just gonna start folding it and it's gonna incorporate the chocolate into the egg mixture. The eggs are the only leavening in this cake. So that's what makes the height of the cake. And it also adds for the richness. I've always said, and I sort of, this is my mantra that uh, a recipe is a suggestion, not this one. You wanna do it the way she asks you to. So we can, we can do a few little things, but we want to make sure that 
we follow the integrity of this recipe. This is something you make once a year or twice a year. Um, I made one to practice a couple weeks ago and we froze it and I said, oh, this is going to be great. We are going to eat this at our birthdays. We're going to have it, you know, for special occasions. It's gone. So it didn't make it to the birthdays. Um, it didn't make it to any celebration. So now I'm going to pour this out into the pan and you get to see just how absolutely gorgeous this is. What's remarkable about this is that it raises up so much and it's kind of like a mousse, sort of a mousse or a souffle at, in the end, but it does, it does deflate as it sits. This is a room temperature cake also, but you can uh, put it, keep it in the fridge or like I said, the freezer. So we're gonna pop this in. And this one's going for 40 minutes. And we're gonna hang on to this because guess what? It's in the topping too. Surprise. All right. Well, as you can imagine, you don't probably wanna be here all day. Um, and so I did make these cakes ahead of time. So what we're gonna do is we are going to prepare them and top them. And those gals that are sitting here get to take these home with them. So we're going to make them really, really oh. pretty. I heard, oh, Julie, you can run over. I maybe snitch you a piece. Both of the, the both of the, uh, our other friends too, the Janets can run over and we'll sneak you a piece. So we're going to start with something very special. Now is the time to break out the pretty dishes, ladies. So I wanna share with you my beautiful, beautiful raspberry plates. And I've had these for 20 years. And these uh, started out at my shop, but I um, took them home because they're kind of special. And uh, I didn't wanna break them. I didn't wanna have that on my conscience for the rest of my life. Cindy will remember, and I'm doing this for my sister, Cindy, this is the bowls that Grandpa Wormislaw gave us. Do you remember? You want to unmute yourself for a second? Hello there. Yes. Hi. So which you got the yellow bowl, didn't you? I have actually, Margot, I think I have two or three of them right over here. I'd have to count them because some are from my husband's family. That's right. Cindy's. Um, mother-in-law and father-in-law owned a camp in Massachusetts and they he was the um the, his grand the grandpa was the um the inventor of candlestick bowling and so and their um sugar bear which is my brother-in-law's dad wasn't he the head of boy scouts in Washington DC at one point 47 years yeah For 47 DC, years yeah so and they and Cindy and and, and Jan lived on um, in uh, DC after he was uh, um, retired from the Air Force and as a, a Lieutenant Colonel and they, he worked for a government contracted company. And uh, um, so they lived on the East Coast of Virginia for, for a long, long time. That's where they raised their kids. This bowl is from our grandpa Wormerslaw in Iowa. And um, he lost our grandma many years before he, as he got older, he gave us these bowls. This is, these are Bavarian China and so this one is what got me kind of hooked on raspberries. And I want to come up close so that you can see how pretty this is. Oh, I didn't even realize that, Marco. That's special. Yes. And so I told my kids, I said, of all the things that we have in the, in the hutch here, this is probably the most valuable, at least to, to our hearts, it is the most valuable. So that got me started on the raspberry stuff. So that's, that's kind of, I, we all have favorite dishes and favorite bowls and things like that. And we got to use them. We can't keep them in the cupboard. You got to pull them out. So when this is the start, this is how beautiful the strawberry cheesecake is that I already made. And it's the whole quart of strawberries in there. I made it yesterday afternoon. And after it came out of the oven and it was cooling, I took a little spatula around the edge and I loosened it up so that all I have to do is pop this off and it comes right off. Okay. 
And so what we're gonna do is plate this cake right on this first plate here. And it does take a little squiggle to get it off. And I'm glad I put the big crust under it because you can see how juicy this is. And these have to be refrigerated. So you're gonna have to keep this in the refrigerator. But there that is. We're going to top this with a little chocolate ganache. And what this is, is six ounces of the dark chocolate, the Ghirardelli dark chocolate, with a quarter cup of heavy cream. And this goes in the microwave for a minute. This will cut into eight pieces. Um, and I have for weddings and for uh, events, I've cut them into 10 pieces. 12 is really small. But if you have more than one dessert at your event, you could cut it into 12 and everybody could get a sliver. Um, and I cut them, I used to cut it for my guests because they are, you wanna cut it with a hot knife. You can destroy a cheesecake really fast if you're just using a regular knife because it'll, it, the cheese will resist. So I always do it with a very hot knife and it takes, um, it, you just want to cut it into like pie pieces if it's your only dessert. And that's what I'll do for the girls today. So I'm going to wait till we get the topping and we are going to be able to make it even prettier than it is. No, that, no, that you saw it. I gave, I gave away this. This is how hard it was. Three minutes. Doesn't take long to melt chocolate, as you know, and this, then with the cream or butter, whatever you're using on top or whatever, it's fabulous. So this is going to be thicker. The topping I make for the cassis cake is going to be a little thinner, but this one is going to be thicker because the consistency of this is like a chocolate fudge. You can see that? Mm -hmm. It's like a fudge. But you want to be precise. I can't tell you. You know, when you think you're, you're all confident when you're first starting out, and I can't tell you how many ganaches I've ruined until I figured out exactly the proportions of cream to the proportions of chocolate. And I, and I was watching one of Ina's shows, and there she said it out loud, and I'm like, oh, I, I would have to peel the tops off and redo them. Oh, I'm telling you, my, I don't know, something is terribly wrong with me, but anyway. So we're gonna put this on top of the cheesecake. You can see how thick it is. And if you could just smell it, holy cow, it smells really, really good. So we're just gonna take it to the edge. We're not gonna go crazy. We're just gonna take it to the edge. So there's no sugar or any sweetener in that at all. Well, it's just the, the sweetness of the, the chocolate and the mm -hmm. sweetness of the cream because it is high, you know, heavy cream. So mm -hmm. there is nothing that's going to help your diet with anything. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that. I was just thinking how it would uh, 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 make this the rest of the cheesecake, you know, right? Not so sweet because there's sugar in that. You're going to find this cheesecake isn't really sweet because of the fruit, um, mm -hmm. and it. The, and I was just telling the girls before we came on that. Fruit cheesecakes to my husband taste like, like, like ice cream sundaes. And I, the, the most popular cheesecake I've made over the years at the shop, I can't even tell you how many, was the blueberry cheesecake. People went absolutely crazy over the blueberry cheesecake. Janet, I think Jeff loved the blueberry cheesecake, as I recall. Um, I'm not, her husband would come in quite often. Um, I, I just, I know that the blueberry cheesecake was the favorite and you could make that. And in the summer, the blueberries we got when I shopped and I handpicked everything. I never had stuff delivered. Cindy knows. Cindy <laughs> has went shopping with me all summer long, every season. Um, and so she knows I handpicked everything. And the blueberries were, they were huge and they were so delicious. And yeah, we had a lot of fun on those road trips. So, and I loved having the company. So we're just going to set this aside and now we're going to go and get our cassis cake. <laughs> Thank you. 
from the moon. You could just go across the river and get blueberries too. You know? I know. Oh, oh my goodness. Can can pick them. Oh, oh the best. So I did the same thing with this cake, and you can see that it's it's sort of kind of uh, gone down in the center a bit, and that's just the natural course of this cake. Um, when it comes out of the oven, you'll see, and I'm hoping that we'll still be able to see them if we can stick around and have enough questions and chit chat. Um, but it, it'll come out from the oven completely level with the top. So I did loosen this up when it was cooling also, so the sides should come right off, which they do. And what we're going to do with this cake is we're going to invert it. So we're going to flip it over. And we're going to take this off, maybe. I'm going to get some a little tool. I made this yesterday afternoon, so I made it a little bit ahead. But this is, I'll show you the value of having the parchment paper on here too. That came out very easily. I have every Pampered Chef tool known to man in the house. <laughs> and it is a good one. And it, it's a nice little spreader when you're making um, like cookies with the kids and all that kind of stuff. Here is the parchment. This is the value that we've got a beautiful cake sitting here now. Absolutely beautiful cake. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another topping. And this one, I believe, is probably a lot more decadent. This has uh, six ounces of chocolate. I think the other one did two, actually. And then we're going to do another quarter cup of cream. And we're going to put that in the microwave over here for another one minute and a half. The kitchen started to smell really good. This, this sink with soapy water is getting really full. Check on this over here. Okay. <laughs> Boy, my husband moved here. He didn't like to see the walls and it couldn't fall for us. Definitely. So, this cake, I do cut in eight, but you could easily make them smaller because they're so rich. So, after I get it done and it's in eight, well, I will cut one in half. I never eat a whole piece. It doesn't, you know, it. It's so rich, and, but it's so, 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 so good. We're going to be adding some more cassis, of course, and we're going to be adding some more vanilla, of course. Vanilla is what heightens the flavors and things, and so it just brings out, if you can even make this more intense, it's going to bring that out as well. So we're going to do that, and this is going to be done in just a sec. Mary Jane's on the countdown for us here. We have sunshine today. We're going to have almost 40 degrees today. Can I hear it for the Minnesota? Yeah. So this chocolate melted very easily. You can see the steam coming with the cream. So Mary Jane's got a pool at her house. Cindy, I've driven you by Mary Jane's house. She's got a pool and she gives private swimming lessons. So I got to get my drink. Are you going to do it this year? Yeah, she's going to do it. That It's just the most beautiful, beautiful house in the jewel. Beautiful. Okay, so here we go. Now, it recommends that you do two to three. How many do you think I'm going to put in there? Three. Of course. This bottle we've had for, I don't know how long, but this is the only thing I use it for. And we're gonna put, it says maybe one teaspoon of vanilla, but of course we'll do two. Okay, we're gonna mix this up again and we're just gonna top this. Now this is a thinner 
what I would call topping. I, I would call it a ganache too, but it's a little bit thinner because of the liquid in there, but it's surprisingly just beautiful when it seals up and you can just see how nice it's pouring out. Very shiny. That's, yeah, that's a point I want to make about it too, because it is, that's what makes, you know, you, you kind of eat with your eyes. <laughs> Definitely with this one. Definitely. So soon my favorite thing, we'll use the little spatula here and let it kind of go down the edges a little bit if it wants to. And I know this is a lot of chocolate, but that's, I mean, we, we don't treat ourselves like this very often, but I don't want you to be intimidated by this cake. This cake, you saw how easy it was to make. I don't know what kind of mixer you have. Even if you have a hand mixer, it'll work great. And so I know you should take an opportunity to explore this. This has no flour in it. It leavened itself. It's the density isn't, it isn't really super dense because it does have the, the inflation of the air from the eggs and, and uh, we didn't deflate it too much when I just folded in the, the mixture. So there are the two cakes for the day. And we, um, we're just gonna wait until the other ones come out of the oven. And so uh, let's see, we're probably looking at a few more minutes. I'm gonna just double check. I do want you to see for sure that the cassis cake when it comes out, I want you to see how high it is. And when you normally would do it, you could do it the same day. Say you're having a dinner party tonight or you're having you know, people over. So you could make it in the morning and just all you have to do is cool it for 40 minutes before you can invert it. You want it to set up and completely cool before you invert it. I made this a day ahead because I wasn't going to get up at six o'clock this morning and uh, and make one. But um, this, like I said, I you need to keep the uh, cheesecake in the refrigerator. They can keep up to one week. You can keep it in the freezer forever. Uh, I was always afraid to put stuff in the freezer. And then my friend Donna Anderson said, she started practicing it. She'd take stuff home. She goes, Margo, you got to get over it. She says, everything works well in the freezer. So um, if, if we ever had leftovers at the end of the weekend, we'd send them home with all the girls. So um, that was our, that's our, our gift to you to let you know that the freezer's your best friend right now. So do we want to open it up for any questions, Stacy? So if anybody wants to unmute and ask us any questions, please feel free. I'm, I was such a good teacher. You have no questions. <laughs> do you think it's something that you could do? Is it something that you think you'd enjoy making? Thank you, Margo. Can you hear me? I can, Julie. Okay. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, I'll run over to Mary Jane's house around the corner and get the. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. Jane. No, I won't. Um, thank you so much. This is always so much fun and delicious. And we try your recipes. And so thank you so much. Well, I thank you. Julie was at our last class and she kept wanting to help me with dishes, but I took your lead and I had Mary Jane. <laughs> Call me today. So I thought, you know, I'm just at the shop. I had two bowls and I never had to worry about a backup bowl. And I'm, you know, I'm just going to live with one bowl now. But thank you, Julie. And thank you for coming. You've come to so many of the classes over the years and, and you and the Janets have been to the shop. I, I really appreciate that. I just felt like, feel like I, the, the happiest and luckiest person in the world to have had all of you in my life mm -hmm. all these years. And um, I do want to tell you, this is my last class. So this is our finale. Um, we've been doing these classes for five years, over five years. Um, you know, and I want to take the opportunity to thank Stacy Falvey for her coordination of these, for her interest in, in getting these going. We did most of them in person, as some of you know, in the shop. Um, and we have since sold the shop. And so it's been converted also into a, a beautiful coffee house and she's doing more remodeling this winter. Um, she's, she took the ceiling, um, I should say her husband took the ceiling out and they, they're dropping chandeliers. It's just gonna be beautiful down there. Um, and they're going to be doing some different things uh, with the shop this year, which I'm excited to see. Um, and so I wanna thank Stacy, and I also wanna thank 
um, those of us with our in our co-op that were part of the early classes, we did more than just baking. We did salads and we did uh, casseroles and soups and we did instant pot things. And I want to thank Donna Anderson, Joanne Clow, Joe Clow, um, also Lisa Gruber. And posthumously, I want to thank Carolyn McCormick because she was always there in the background doing her dishes and and uh, we're going to miss her. She um, she was part of our original co-op and she was with me the whole time. And as oddly as this will sound, she passed away on our last day that we were open. She tried, she wanted so badly to be there that last day. And she just, she was certainly there in spirit. So um, we take her with us, but I wanna thank the library for considering us. This has been such a uh, fun time. When we were in person, it got a little irreverent at times and uh, we had to tone it down a little bit and we're probably lucky it wasn't um, videoed, uh, but um, at that point, so I have to be on my best behavior. Um, City knows that's hard for me, but um, we, uh, I am enjoying having people back in my house. We don't go anywhere without a mask now. I walk outside without a mask, but we wear, them. these ladies are vaccinated and we um, are very confident that we're comfortable. Linda has a little, do you want to share the story about your husband? Sure. Linda, do you want to come over here? Linda has a little story to kind of bring us into the reality check. And she was sharing it with us. And she, I think she, she would like to share this with you. About my husband? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in November, my husband was uh, diagnosed with COVID pneumonia. And that encompasses the lungs. And he went into one hospital, then another hospital, and was airlifted to Mayo. And uh, he was there for over 30 days with tubes here and tubes there. And we couldn't even see him. We couldn't see my husband at all, which was very difficult. Um, my girls and son lived close. But then in, uh, <clears throat> then in uh, the end of December, he was taken to acute care in the city. Well, I'm happy to say that within the next two weeks now that he'll get the trach out and um, the feeding tube and all those tubes and, but he'll still need physical therapy. So if you want to add him to your prayer list, I'd appreciate it. His name is Dwayne. And, uh, but things are looking up and I know other people have had similar stories. So it's called that I hope soon it, it's over. So thank you for letting me share. Oh, thank you for sharing. Yeah, so he'll get to, he can eat things that are nice and soft. <laughs> so I'll definitely share some of these things with him because we like chocolate. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for sharing that. I think um, when we look at the state of where we're at right now, I think that Mary Jane is also a nurse. And I've told Lyle and I've told my sister Cindy this too, but I've told Lyle for years about the superbugs and the superbugs are coming and the, the antibiotic resistant things that we're faced with and all of the challenges. And I admire so much everybody's um, commitment to it, many people's commitment to it and knowing that it's gonna get better, but I don't think they're gonna go away. I think you just don't throw your masks away is what I say, but to be careful and to um, always, and what Linda also shared with us this morning is she and her husband have been married 55 years. Mm -hmm. And even though they missed Christmas together and this happened in November and she was, she was sad about that and sad about the family events, I think we all know what that feels like not to be able. We had for our Christmas this year, we only had half of our family here because um, my, my daughter-in-law um, got a breakthrough case of COVID from her son who was unvaccinated at school and he was sick. And my daughter in Wisconsin, he didn't, her son didn't have COVID, but he was sick too. So we had a really um, low key Christmas and it was good for all of us to be introspective about our lives and, and understanding that um, even though we can't always be together, we're always in each other's hearts, that's for sure. Well, I'm gonna go over there and check on that cake. I have a question for you, Margo. Sure. Uh, how do you make your vanilla? Where do oh, you get your beans? Thank you, Linda or Janet. We have, um, this is absolute vodka. And if you can see, there's some beans floating around in there. 
These are Madagascar vanilla beans. And mm -hmm. so we take the vodka and we slit by the vanilla beans. And at right now they're about $8 a piece at Penzi's. They're the best. This will last if you, if this is a normal household, which mine is now a normal household, I would go through one of these every two weeks at the shop because that's how much baking I did. This will last me for months, if not the whole year. Um, and I'm surprised at how much I've been using, but I've been doing, uh, I did a lot of baking over the holidays. You do a little bit more during that time. But I suggest that you guys do this. Um, and so you take the vanilla bean and you slit it open to expose the seeds, drop them in and marinate it for two to four months and just, ha just shake it. Put it in a cool, dark place like a pantry or maybe like a closet somewhere. And so it doesn't get sun exposed and it'll, it'll be, it just gets better with time. And some people, I, I think one of the gals from our original group still has 15 years later, still has some of her original vanilla left. So, and you never drink it. So I'm not, I'm not a hard liquor drinker, but uh, I, I would, I would probably, they'd have to arrest me after what I did to someone after they drank some of this. So thank you very much. Thank you for asking. So how many beans do you have in there? Like there is six, six beans in there. Yes. Yes. There's six, there's six vanilla beans in there. We just watched, listen to a segment. Does anybody listen to NPR when you're in the car? Oh yeah. I'm just totally. So uh, there was a segment on Madagascar um, yesterday when we were going somewhere and it talked about how with global warming that um, they have so many disasters in Madagascar. They're in that sort of rainforesty sort of um, environment. Madagascar is one place and South America is the other place where vanilla beans are grown. And so um, they are um, concerned about all of that. And um, it was an interesting segment, and if you get a chance to, to listen to it, it was, it's kind of what's happening around the world, so. I'm going to take this out and show you, and it smells really good. I'm going to show this to you. How tall is this? This isn't exactly done right now. Can you see it okay? You can see how much it rose. I'm gonna put it back. Uh, it's actually, it's almost done. Um, I'm almost, I'm also gonna bring out the cheesecake too. It's not quite done, but I can show you what it looks like. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. And it just, it's just so beautiful. And there's the cheesecake. Now this will set up, I need to set this up um, probably for two days or day for sure. I wouldn't even think about taking this out of the pan until tonight. But um, what it, you, you, I did be, with the shop is I made them two days ahead so they would set up and be just perfect for when people would come in. And you could, oh yeah, I have one good story for you. <laughs> My worst disaster at the shop. This is like seriously the worst disaster. I was taking, this was my nightmare. I was taking the cheesecakes out of the oven and I totally dropped a hot blueberry cheesecake in the middle of the kitchen. Mm. I don't need to tell you where it went. I'm sure there's still some of it somewhere down there on the floor. Um, I, I, you know, there, there's no way to get mad at myself because it just happened. And because um, I'm always in a hurry, that's kind of what I did. But I dropped it and I said, of course I did that. I had to walk away for a while <laughs> because it's like, do you never, do you ever like drop an egg on the floor and go, oh, and you know how hard it is to clean it up, that egg? This was a whole cheesecake of egg. So anyway, that was the worst disaster. Joe Paul, I'll tell you Joe Paul's worst disaster. She was the queen of making our scotch roots, okay? So the pan that we made the Scotch roots in was this big and it was like a whole box of Rice Krispies. So I was in the back, I was walking in the back to do something and she and Joe Paul were, or she and uh, Joe and Lisa were in the kitchen and all of a sudden I heard them, I, I believe Lisa had an expletive, uh, Joe was laughing so hard. The whole bowl of Rice Krispies 
went everywhere. I mean, we had Rice Krispies in the outlet um, in the floor. We had them. We were finding them for weeks and months. It was, but you have to laugh at this stuff. Otherwise, if we always got could laugh at each other. And um, from the first day we opened, I'm not knowing if anyone would come. And we, for whatever reason, um, this this fine group of friends found their way around the kitchen, and there was there was five of us in there, and we made it happen. And then at the end, um, we had six kids working with us. We had lots of kids in there, and and uh, towards the you know the last two years, it was just me. But we had a lot of fun, and there there was very few other mishaps that like that. So, but the, I just remember I can picture that cheesecake like it was yesterday. <laughs> Sounds like. Lucille Ball. Yeah, Lucy. <laughs> Sue says it sounds like Lucille Ball, and I, I would have to say yes. It, it probably was a lot like Lucy. I see Jeff in the background, and Jeff has been to our classes at um, at the shop, and now he's he's joining us today. So good to see you. And now I'm going to say we are concluding, but I have a message. I always have. Kind of a message to share at the end of these classes that um, is close to my heart and I taught leadership classes at Mayo for 20 years and I had it was a privilege to teach leadership classes and one of the things that I always shared at the end of the week we had week-long classes and the one thing I always shared at the end because we had really high high level leadership people in the class we had people that were we were coming out of the 80s and 90s with the mean bosses. Do you remember the mean bosses that thought they were the meaner, the better? Well, their legacy now is maybe that wasn't such a good thing. Your legacy actually happens about 10 or 15 years after you're gone. So, but um, what I'd like to share is that no matter what you do in your life, what you accomplish and all of the projects and all of the things that you work so hard on and everything that meant so much to you at the time and all the overtime and extra hours that you worked won't be what you'll be remembered for. You'll be remembered for how you made people feel. And that is your legacy. And that's our legacy of loving each other. And the one thing I want to ask you is now, especially during these trying times, just to try to look at everything through the eyes of love. And so with that, I'm going to say bye. And thank you for coming. You guys are the best. See you. Hopefully I'll see you all soon around town. Thank you.